President Putin, in the early days of the conflict, uh, actually raised the specter of the potential use of nuclear weapons. Uh, it is something that we do have to be concerned about. Based on our current analysis, we have not changed our nuclear posture to date. As a stark reminder today, just ahead of President Biden's trip overseas from National Security Advisor Jake Sullivan, he says Russia may turn to either chemical or biological weapons before he would use nuclear weapons. Russian forces stall, and Ukraine claims it has won back Kyiv suburb in fierce fighting. Ministry of Defense says Moscow forces are making little progress, while Ukraine claims 300 Russian troops refuse to carry out attacks. Putin is already attacked, as we know, civilians in homes, schools, theaters, shopping centers. U.S. intelligence experts fear he is setting the stage to launch a gas attack, similar to what happened in Syria five years ago. Now, here in the West, obviously, we have access to a lot of different information. In Russia, they do not. In fact, they are getting a completely different story about this war, one that is inaccurate, as far as our reporting can tell. One military expert said earlier on Russian state media, the West will never lift sanctions on Russia. This is war. What should be our reaction? Tactical nuclear weapons as battlefield arms. Remember, this is state TV. Rearming Iskanders, which is a type of missile launcher with special munitions. By now, you know there are really two wars being waged here, one on the battlefield and the other is online. We'll put up some of the disinformation that comes out of Vladimir Putin, including this narrative that somehow Russian troops are liberating ethnic Russians from neo-Nazis in eastern Ukraine. That's what he says. CBS News, the Azov Battalion, how Putin built a false premise for a war against Nazis in Ukraine. There is a large contingent, though, in the West that retweets a lot of Vladimir Putin's talking points. Obviously, CBS News debunked that one, as if somehow there was a moral equivalency between Ukraine and Vladimir Putin. Aaron Matei, journalist with Gray Zone, joins us from Vancouver, Canada. Aaron, good to see you. I looked through your Twitter account uh, at length, follow you, and enjoy it. It seems at times as though you think that there is a moral equivalency between Vladimir Putin and the Ukrainians, and Putin has some good points to be made. Is that a fair characterization? It's not. I don't make sweeping moral judgments. I make judgments on specific points. Does Vladimir Putin have legitimate security grievances and issues with Ukraine? Yes, he does. Do I wish he had dealt with them in a different way than illegally invading Ukraine? Yes, I do. But that doesn't mean that I'm going to ignore the very real reality that there are, in fact, neo-Nazis inside Ukraine who have, in fact, posed a serious threat to the Russian speakers of eastern Ukraine for the last eight years. That's why there's been a war there going on. Where yeah, 14, I, 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 I was there in 2014 when the war started, and I did not see any atrocities against Russians. I saw, saw a whole lot of Russians committing atrocities against Ukrainians. But Did you I, see the neo-Nazis who led the coup that overthrew the government that set off this war? Because that yeah, was the major... Yeah, again, I, but I, I understand this whole like, concept of neo-Nazis and you, the equivalence because there are some people who have far-right views and some neo-Nazis. Fine, I'll grant you that. In There's the Azov Ukraine, Brigade, hold on. Ukraine, hold on. Leland, hold, hold Ukraine on. How, is the only how country... Do, you they must be... Hold on. Leland, they must, Leland, just let me Ukraine, ask you this question. Listen, one point. Ukraine is the only country in the world that has the distinction of having a neo-Nazi militia, the Azov Battalion, formally incorporated into its armed forces. That's why there were attempts in Congress led by the late John Conyers to ban U.S. assistance to the Azov Battalion. Oh, I, I understand. Okay. And that passed. Okay, but we, I guess, Aaron, we can all agree, though, that they must be really bad neo-Nazis if they're fighting to preserve the country and the presidency of a Jewish president. To call them neo-Nazis is a huge stretch. Well, no, to call them neo-Nazis is, is a fact. It's been widely recognized. Now it's fashionable to forget that they're neo-Nazis because now we're increasing our support for them. But the, I'm not calling all Ukrainians neo-Nazis, and they're only a small percentage of the armed forces, but it's a fact that they have an outsized role. And that's why Zelensky was elected on a peace platform. He was going to make peace with the rebels in the East. That's why he got an overwhelming mandate. What happened, though, when he came in? The neo-Nazis of Ukraine held rallies, threatened to coup him, threatened to even to kill him, and he backed down in the face of them. So this talking point that they're, that neo-Nazis can't have a serious role in Ukraine because of so the Jewish president is false. They threatened his life. Oh, okay, I, 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 I'm, still, and, I'm still getting past this, the clear Kremlin talking point that somehow that this very small group of, of neo-Nazis, and, and sure, there are people in the Azov Brigade who subscribe to that philosophy, and its leader has some questionable history. Uh, 
It is hard to say, though, that, that President Zelensky is fighting to keep his country free and whole from Russia because he supports neo-Nazism. And that's exactly what the Kremlin is saying. How are you not helping the Kremlin? Yeah, well, I've never said that Zelensky supports neo-Nazism. I'm just acknowledging But that's what you're fact. inferring. No, it's not what I'm inferring. I'm acknowledging the fact that neo-Nazism is a serious problem inside Ukraine. That's it, why, again, what, what, what the, proof the fact do you that have? Hold on, hold on, hold on. That, what, proof do you, what proof do you have that neo-Nazism is a serious problem inside Ukraine? When I was there covering the war in 2014 and all my coverage since, I have yet to hear a, any reasonable person from the West, in, except okay. apologists for Vladimir Putin, say neo-Nazism is a problem there. Well, then you're, join, then you're forgetting, then you're basically you're calling the U.S. Congress uh, an, an apologist for Putin too, because they passed a measure spearheaded by John Conyers to ban assistance to the Azov Battalion in 2018. Only Look to this, this battalion of a few hundred they are people, Nazi, And you're also ignoring the fact that in the coup in 2014, which kicked all of this off, right after that happened, there were at least four officials from far-right parties inside Ukraine, including from Svoboda, which has its origins in, uh, in neo-Nazism inside Ukraine, appointed to senior cabinet positions. I, I, and that's what helped set off this conflict. You don't have okay. to support the invasion to acknowledge so, the reality that there is a serious problem inside uh, Ukraine. Okay, I, 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 president I, I, doesn't change I still, I still, I still am disagreeing with you whether or not there's a serious problem. And simply the U.S. Congress restricting U.S. aid to a small group of people that, by the way, is backed by a bunch of Jewish uh, oligarchs inside Ukraine. I know. Uh, oh, yeah, okay, so it, they must be really bad neo-Nazis. But I digress still. To somehow say oh, that Jews. that is a major problem inside Ukraine. How, how does that but, equate to a major problem inside Ukraine worthy of mock, you, mimicking the Kremlin you know, talking if you go points? Back, if you go back to early 2014, 2015, when the war started, it was the Azov Battalion that was on the front lines of this fight against the Russian-speaking rebels in the East. And the Russian-speaking rebels in the East rose up because they their culture was being assaulted. It, it, I, I, people, Aaron, Aaron, I got to tell you, and, I, and so I was, they were, I was, they Aaron, being, I was there. They didn't rise up because their culture was being assaulted. They rose up because Vladimir Putin sent in the GRU and the little green men to organize them. Okay, Leland, are you familiar with the Odessa massacre? Yeah. Have you heard of that? Yes, you, I have. Really? Okay. So, when, on, so assuming, you're be, assuming you're being factual, you have heard of it. When dozens of people, Russian-speaking people in Odessa on May 2nd, 2014, were burnt alive by neo-Nazis, because they we, were protesting we can all take the any one we can all take the, any one point okay the the invasion of the invasion of eastern ukraine happened long before that okay i was i was the, the, i was there as rush is is the is the little green men and the russians and the ethnic russians were beating and, and, and slaughtering up, ukrainians so, long before that so right, I, i'm just and, unclear as to how okay, how right, we get from yeah, all sure. of this to nazis and to the kremlin talking point and, okay and i'll tell you before that what happened was in february 2014 there was a coup. The government of Yanukovych was totally corrupt, had a lot of problems, but it was democratically elected. And they were overthrown in a coup led by far right and neo-Nazi actors. That's just a fact. Everyone acknowledges so, that. So, is, so it was John, okay, and John McCain, and then, wait, hold, and hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Moves, wait, and John wait, McCain was there in the square, hold on. And John McCain was there in the square. Hold on, John McCain, so was John McCain supporting neo-Nazis because he was there in the square? There's a picture of him standing side by side with the neo-Nazi. Absolutely. Oh, okay. Yes. So, so yes. we are to believe that John McCain them. supports neo-Nazis. Maybe it was it. Is it better to have somebody who has far-right views and then has a larger part of the government, as the Azov Brigade is a very small part of Ukraine, or is it better to have Vladimir Putin slaughter the country and take over and own Ukraine and put in a new puppet government? I don't accept the premise of your question. It was the Well, those US, are the choices, it, it, my friend. That's no, what sorry, the battlefield the is. No, I'm sorry. No, it's not the choice. There's been a peace actual accord on the table since 2015 called the Minsk Accords. Yeah. I'm sure you've heard of it. And Minsk calls essentially for demilitarizing the Donbass in return for granting it some limited autonomy, but still staying inside Ukraine. And, and, and the, and the Russians violated that 8 billion times. How did the Russians violate? They, the Russians because they continue the to flow weapons treaty. into the into the into the Russian partisans. Well, they they have given some limited support <laughs> to the Russian rebels, but but it's <laughs> on the <laughs> only. Come on, man! No, no, no. Like limited. I, I I hate to well, make it like this, but whose side are you on? I'm on the side of justice and peace. And by the way, but, 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 about, but is it, hold on, hold on, isn't hold on there absolute rights hold and hold absolute second. wrongs? How if, do you both? You how do you both sides? How do you both? If you care about pouring in weapons. 
Perhaps you have some words of outrage for the fact the U.S. has poured in billions of dollars worth of weapons since 2014. Yeah, and, and, and the, the U.S. has a history of, of supporting Kiev. democratically elected governments, which, except by the way, the, we're yeah, not trying yeah. to take back the, 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 the Donbass. The democratically second, elected government, except for the one that we overthrew back in 2014, except for that one. And we didn't it, overthrow it, it. We didn't overthrow it. It was a revolution. Okay, you want to call it a revolution, fine. I prefer to listen to the words of Victoria Nuland, who is now a top official under Biden. And back when she was a top official under Obama, there's a leaked recording in which her and the U.S. ambassador to Ukraine, Jeffrey Piat, plot who is going to be the next Ukrainian government. They settle on a guy called Gatsnyuk. And guess yeah. what? After what you call the revolution in February 2014, which essentially was... Oh, okay. A violent ouster of Yanukovych. Yatsenyuk became the prime minister. I, 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 understand, I, understand, I understand the premise. There's a lot more to it. I got to tell you, I appreciate you coming on. I'm going to give you the last word, which you had, Aaron. Thank you. You're welcome back anytime. We appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Yeah, no, thank you. Thanks for watching. Click the red subscribe button below so you can get more of News Nation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.